Ryan Scott, we first got to meet him as a contestant on season four of Top Chef, set right here in Chicago. He's a, a chef, an author, and, also, and he's got his new book, The No Fuss Family Cookbook. And he's in town this week for a special event with Moon Milk. There it is. There's the cookbook right there. Ryan, it's so great to meet you. It's nice to meet you. How serendipitous is it that your last name is Zoom? <laughs> I, I know. Mean, you must be so famous the last couple months. I, I should have trademarked it. I oh, you did? Good for you. Good for you. Do you like my uh, my little humble abode here in Chicago? <laughs> I do. Well, welcome back to Chicago. Big fan of, of, of Top Chef. And obviously, season four meant to, so much to us here in the city. But you, Stephanie Izard, we have Richard Blaze. I mean, there's so much big talent out of that, that season that are still – you know, almost 15 years later, I mean, we still see everybody on, on TV and we're so happy that everyone is still, you know, successful. Yeah. I, I mean, Chicago to me is kind of like, you know, when you're from high school and you're like, this is my hometown. Chicago to me is my hometown of television. It's where I got started. It's where I cut my teeth. It's where people uh, found me as a brand, as a name. And my first time to Chicago was the first time I got off a plane to shoot here. I mean, we flew in, no joke. Let's just say we flew in on a Sunday night. We started, we flew in at one. And we started shooting at 4 a.m. at Pizza Uno. We had pizza in front of us and Padma in a very nice dress uh, by 6 a.m. And we were eating pizza, deep dish pizza. We were all tired. And then we didn't stop, stop shooting until 1 a.m. the next day. It was absurd. Um, this city is, you know, when you say food cities, Chicago is the food city that I think models are built after. I think you've got New York and San Francisco and Bay Area is where I'm from. Secondary, you come to Chicago, you eat, you eat culture, you eat lifestyles, you eat food in general, you eat all the states surrounding and more. Uh, and then you've just got a cheesesteak too, you know, like uh, what's what's the uh, Portillo's? Portillo's, yeah. I don't care where I travel in the whole world. You say Portillo's, you think a chilled beer, cheese and a little cup, you know, ch little French fries with crinkles in it and a mess. And it is the most amazing mess ever i just i love chicago and he, um and also too you know when you were talking about that peace episode i have the dvd one of the few dvds oh, I, I still have left but you can see it in the very first episode it's uh it's cool to re go back and relive that yes i can't but what is a dvd <laughs> let me tell you back in you know <laughs> before, oh, Rudy, phones, I... before electricity oh my before... gosh can i tell you something we were in Kauai the other day with my daughters and my wife and we were on vacation and we walked, there's chickens that walk over Kauai. It's, it's the most beautiful island. I love it so much. We got married in Maui. And we walked past a payphone. And my four-year-old, my four-and-a-half-year-old says, Daddy, what's that? And I'm like, oh, my God. My daughter doesn't know what a payphone is. She has no clue. She doesn't know what, a, what just a phone that's on the wall. She only knows that this is YouTube Kids, that it's not a cell phone. It's YouTube Kids and Bluey. It is like, it is... It is crazy. So yes, DVD, super proud of that DVD. That was um, the first DVD of their collection of their series and um, show did really well. And to think about who came from that show, uh, Antonio LaFaso, Spike Middleson is absolutely blowing up the vegan world right now with his plant-based company. Richard Blaze has done unbelievably well. Stephanie Izard, I think you guys are renaming Chicago to Izard Chicago. We are, we are yes, um, it's gonna be happening yeah. soon. If she opens one more restaurant, Chicago needs to just give her the key 365. Um, but just a great city and I, I don't take it back if I could do it all over again. Of course, I would have done better. But when you're 27, you only know so much. Now I'm 411, so I'm good. I'm good. Lots, <laughs> lots of Botox. We high cut. You know, we do it. It looks good. You know, <laughs> perfect lighting, and then, then you're you're good to go. Well, thank you. <laughs> one, one last question about that. You said you came into Chicago, and people started recognizing you at the airport, at the hotel. Tell me a little bit about what that experience was like, especially you know, you're a celebrity here in Chicago. Yeah, I, um, you know, I was telling, saying before this, I live in a town where a lot of celebrities live. So you kind of high five at the grocery store when you're picking up moon milk. <laughs> but, you know, to be honest, I got at the airport and a couple of people said, oh, my God, Top Chef Chicago. And I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, wait, I am in Chicago. And then last night at dinner, when I walked in, a couple of people said hi and want to take photos. And then I was walking home last night from dinner to my hotel. And a couple of people stopped me. One person said my pants were really tight, which I agree. And then another person was like, I love your, your season. And so uh, it's great because to, I always say this, I didn't do The Bachelor, you know, to be known for going to date somebody or be known to do what is your craft. It's pretty cool to do a show that is my craft, to be affiliated with a show that is what is my lifestyle. And a lot of people always forget, this is what we do. 
you know, 16 years later, I still own a company that I launched the day after Top Chef. Uh, and it's great. And to be in a food city and Chicago's man, they don't even ask you. They're like, oh my God, Ryan. And I'm like, like they're just, they're selfing it from the get go. But I was saying this, I was in Minneapolis on the way here and I stopped in the Delta lounge. Somebody was asking me for a photo and I, and I took one and I was super honored. And across from me, I was staring at somebody else. The killers were in my lounge. The Killers did a show here at the United Center last night. That's not, yeah. I'm, si I'm sitting there with them. They're looking at me because somebody's taking a photo with me, but I'm looking at them because of the Killers. And then I end up go taking a photo with them. And they're like, who are you? And I was like, oh, you asked that question. Can I take a selfie? <laughs> <laughs> that is all. So, so your, your time in Top Chef, you, were, you say you were 27 years old, but now you've got a family. You have this new cookbook, the No Fuss Family Cookbook, yeah. 80 recipes. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what, what's in there. I got to tell you the difference in this, this is my third book. I'm working on my fourth right now. And from my first book to this book now, my first book I wrote in my house in San Francisco and it was just me and my girlfriend at the time, which is now my wife and we had our house. And in that first book was devised around one recipe in five different ways. I give you one simple dish that can turn into five different dishes from that home. And then when we came up with No Fuss Family Cookbook, literally the publisher signed me and said, I want what you do on Instagram. And I was like, a uh, selfie book? And they're like, no, 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 food book. And the food book is relatable. I mean, No Fast Family, family Cookbook to me means all about just being able to pull from the fridge or pull from the slow cooker. And a lot of people don't know what slow cookers are like, like uh, pay phones. But, you know, it's about simplicity. It's about ease. And I got to say, being a parent is, um, is the best job ever. It's the only job I ever want. But it, it is tasking. And at the end of the day, what you want to be able to do is pre-prep, pre-cook, grab and shop a lot, bring wholesome ingredients into your house. And wholesome ingredients could be from as simple as me grabbing moon milk from the fridge and giving my daughter her favorite glass, which is the blueberry lavender, or making a little bowl that I do a granola bowl with also the tumor uh, clover sonoma uh, milk. But the book you'll see, there's a dish that you can do. You can do my tomato soup with waffles instead of regular toast. And this is everything goes in the slow cooker set it on low, go to work and come back. It's about making a braised pork that you can eat for multiple days with different dishes. It's about pulling frozen rice out of the freezer, Rudy, and then making a dish with frozen rice. Look, parents, not parents, everybody is now a novice after COVID. I mean, people couldn't cook for anything and now people are like, oh, I'm Julia Child because I had two and a half years at home and I know how to make a roux now. Well, guess what? No Fuss Family Cookbook eliminates all that. Every recipe that I wrote has a story. I believe if you do a book, a book has to have substance. The same thing with me after 16 years of Top Chef, I only affiliate myself with brands that first of all, I use, second of all, I love, and second of all, something, third of all, something that I can get behind. And so with this book, you'll see multiple stories in here. Um, I'm kind of funny. And what's really cool about it is it's just, it's relatableness. My wife is Chinese. Um, my mother-in-law is full Chinese. My wife's half Chinese. My daughters are quarter Chinese. So I'm using soy sauce in recipes. We're pulling in lots of ginger in recipes. I'm using Gai Long for the first time in my life. And it allowed me to also learn about my wife's heritage. I learned a lot about reason why my wife makes juk. And that's what her grandmother made her when she was a little girl. And juk to me is basically warm oatmeal. And I, you know, the relate, relatableness on my side, but no, it is a carnaroli rice, which is what you make risotto from. It's made from a delicious chicken stock. And it's the only darn way I can get the recipe from her was to put it in a book. <laughs> Even for a book, please. Yeah, share it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And she's just like, no, you just got to sit down. She's like, okay, well, let me just have this glass of wine and you just uh, let me just cook, Brian. And I took three screens. So my food stylist lives in San Diego. I have a writer in New York City. We zoomed all in. And they're like, Leslie, like, how much did you use on that? And she's like, I don't know. Like, I don't, it's this much. You know, she's like, she's like, it's like, it's like the cup. It's like this. Well, how much is that, Ryan? Put water in there and measure it. It's like, I'm not going to do that. It's just, it's, it looks like a cup. And then they have to go back and make it. Uh, that's just what's really cool about this book. You're going to love it. My friends have loved it. It was a bestseller out of the gate in four categories on Amazon for six weeks. And it's still selling like gangbusters today because I wrote it. 
I styled it. These are my recipes. I'm not pulling from anywhere. These are just rad dishes. As far as, you know, your, your family and, and kids in general, especially once they get to like two years old, three years old, and they start, ex you want them to start experimenting with flavors. And, you know, maybe what's kind of a good gateway thing, especially, you know, we talked about the blue moon, that's blueberry lavender. So kids may have had blueberry, but they may not have had lavender and kind of incorporating that into their diets and into the recipes and things that they're going to end up ultimately, you know, loving as adults. Yes, absolutely. I, I learned something from Lydia Bastianich and she is the grandmother of culinary arts. And I, I wrote it in the preface of this book in the, in like one of the first two sentences. And Lydia taught me when I met her on tour, I spoke at one of her tours that she's doing for her book. And she came up to me, she's like, Ryan, from one to four with kids, it doesn't matter if it's coffee or if it's grapefruit juice, or if it's just a rosemary sprig. She's like, warm that up. Take those essential oils. Put those essential oils in your daughter's nose. And as a one-year-old or an eight-month-old, when she's eating applesauce, have the sensors, the brain, the mechanism of what makes the people go, oh, I don't like that. Let her smell spinach when you saute it with ginger and garlic. Let her have fried eggs early and not just soft boiled eggs. So texturally, they understand the balance of food. And what Lydia taught me was I, before moon milk, I was sneaking spinach into everything that was blue. And then when you take lavender and you take everything from the 2% organic milk that's in there, the botanicals and spices that are inside this, it helps with the body to respond to physical and emotional sensors. It also happens with kids too. So I'm introducing a product, first of all, that I don't have to make. It's at my store. This is a family owned third generation dairy that's based where I live. So when we pass cows in California, my daughter always says, Clover, I like to have a story with food. So a story with food, if, if it's just taking spinach, and granted my four and a half year old's like, I don't like this now, but at least she knows what it is. When we go to restaurants, she's having pasta with red sauce and finishing it with Parmesan cheese. But I was just telling Shannon, a friend of ours, this is how we met Mr. Zoom. And, uh, <laughs> and I said, I love, we were doing a chocolate tasting because I don't want my daughter to know what a chocolate bar is. I want her to understand what chocolate is. So in Kauai, we got a cacao. And any, any, any way that you can just inform kids or learn for yourself, put down the guard. Learn green bananas, learn the difference in a plantain. When you go traveling, learn the food of the country, the town, or the city that you're in. Understand what deep dish is in Chicago. Why it is so quintessential? Why are the jugs of beer so big in Chicago? Have five of them to figure it out. You know, understand what it's about. But um, I got to tell you, man, teaching kids early and adults early. And if you're an adult and you're stuck in your way, stuck in your way, and you do not want to try anything new, I want you to, every time you go shopping, grab one new thing. Now, if it's the moon milk because it has hibiscus inside here and you think, oh, I want to try something different and cherry hibiscus, understand that hibiscus is a beautiful flower and it's, you know, the Mexican origins of hibiscus and it has a floral note to it. All those kind of things are cool, but grab one new thing. If it's a fennel bulb, if it's a pear you never have, and somehow try to incorporate it in your monthly routine. And if you do that once a month through the year, you have 12 new ingredients in your repertoire. And if you go, ooh, I don't like it, at least you know that, that anise is the flavor of fennel. But if you knew that you can eat fennel raw, you can juice it, you can shave it, you can braise it, you can do anything with it, you can grill it, it can be a main dish. That's what's really cool about food. And it's ever changing ever changing my friend and that's why i am beyond stoked to be with you mr rudy zoom you guys check these guys out they are absolutely phenomenal this is a brand that is going nationwide you can find it at your uh, whole foods is where the best place to find them right now but if you guys want to go to clovertheboon.com you can find out everything about this brand i am in love with them this one is my third child my middle child and my fifth so i have five kids now one is turmeric one is cherry and one is blueberry lavender and mr zoom it was really cool to hang out with you, man. You know how to wrap up an interview. I mean, that was perfect right there. Huh? Well, you don't want to wrap it up. It's fine. But I can tell you did this. You grabbed your ear. So that means you were ready to go. No Fuss Family <laughs> Cookbook. You go ahead and order that as well, too. Ryan, welcome back to Chicago. That's great. Let's go get a let's go get a cheese steak and some, well, you can have a beer. I'm going to have some moon milk. Give yourself a moment. Treat yourself. Read the labels at the store. Read the labels at the restaurants. Read the labels at the grocery store. And pay attention to what you put in your body because we got one chance, man. We got one chance. And that's what I'm saying. If I could do Top Chef all over again, all stars, I would win it. I would annihilate it. And I would name my third child if I had one Rudy Zoom. There you go. <laughs> 
Ryan, you're the best. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon, Rudy. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye, guys. See you on the street. Thank you. It's going to be really weird drinking these at Portillo's with straws. Just you and I. Can we hold hands when we do it, too? We can. And we'll take a selfie. Oh, my God. We totally say, But you have to ask me before I do it. I will. Here, Rudy, you hold this one, and I'll hold this one. Look at us. Oh. <laughs> there you oh. go. Oh, okay. <laughs>